In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the creation and use of 2D arrays with objects. So if you recall what a 2D array is, it's a uh, grid-like structure. It has rows and columns. So rows are the things that go left to right. Row 0, row 1, row 2, row 3. So there's a total of four rows, num uh, numbered 0 through 3. And then there are five columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 columns that go up and down. And again, numbered 0 through 4 because of the numbering system. So this spot here is 0, 0. And we always refer to arrays with row column notation. So this spot here would be row 2. So read that first, row 2, column 3. Not the other way around. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and uh, create a program to do this. I'm going to use a simplified time class we created in class. That's going to consist of an hour and minute. I have a simple constructor here. Let me take out this thing here. We don't need this time thing here, a and p.m. Hour and minute. And we have a two string that's going to simply print out hours and minutes. So let me close that up there, and let's go to the 2D array uh, driver here. So here's my basic structure. So when we create a 2D array, I'm going to have the word time here with two sets of brackets. The, first, the, the two sets of brackets represent 2D array. If I put a third set, I could create a 3D array and so forth. This is the name of the array, my times, and it's going to be a new 2D array and like I showed in the picture there, four rows and five columns, rows, columns. Um, so that creates the array. So right now there's nothing in it, so we have to use, put some times in it. So uh, typically we use this what they call a nested for loop, for int row equals zero. It's basically a for loop in a for loop. My times dot length and row plus plus one, two, three. But end and outer for. I say outer because there's a for loop inside here that's the inner for loop. Column equal to zero. So this is the upper left hand corner. Column less than my times. Now this is interesting, the, the zero thing. And we're going to say column plus plus one, two, three. And inner for. So right, this is interesting because this zero says when we are cycling through, and the way we cycle through is we cycle through like a book. There's my picture here. So um, I start here and I visit each element left to right like I'm reading a book. This element, this element, this element, this element, this element. And I only want to go to the length of the zero throw. How long is the zero throw? Well, it's five elements long. So what this is saying here is, go to the length of the zero throw, which is that first row. And actually, you could have put one and two and three because they're all the same length, but we typically use zero. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put something in each element. My times row column, so the zeroth box, is going to have something. And I want to put in a new, a new time element. New time. And our time, if you recall, took an hour and a minute. And what I'm going to use here uh, for the time here is I'm going to say, I'm just going to use the row and column as the, as the time. Row, column. So this is going to be the hours and the minutes. Um, I could have done something like math.random, but something really quick and easy here. I'm just going to use the row and column as the hours and minutes. So this first element is going to have zero hours and zero minutes, and then so forth. So that's what I do there. And to print that out, I'm going to put a little message here. System dot out dot print line inputting times into the 2D array. And then over here I want to print, I'm gonna print it out. I'm gonna actually copy this because it's very similar. I'll say printing. So now Inside the for loop, you'll notice here, everything else is going to be the same. The only thing I'm going to change is inside the inner for loop. So I'm simply going to system.out.println my times row column. So I'm going to go to the row and column thing and print out what's there. And it's a time object. And if I try to print out a time object, I will basically be calling the toString method of that class. So let's let's close. Let's move this over here. Take a look at here. 
and compile this thing. Compile. Looks like I compiled. And let's run it, see what happens. It's back over here. I'm going to run the 2D array. And we get. Looks like something that we expected 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and but it's all printing linearly all the way down the screen. I want I was expecting something grid like in the in the picture I showed in the beginning. So maybe we need to do some things here. We don't want to print a, a line after every single time. We only want to print it after the zero throw is done. So let's how can we remedy that? So if I go back in here, I don't want to print a line after each thing. Actually, in fact, I want to print a space or two. Print a couple of spaces there. I want to print a space. And then after I've printed out an entire column, so after this for loop right here, then I'll print a line. System dot out dot print line. And I'll print out a backslash n, which is a backslash n, which is a new line or basically an enter, because that's the time I want to print a new line. So I'm going to not print a line after each time. I'm going to print the time with a couple spaces just so we get some separation. And then we're going to print a new line after that entire row and then go to the next row. So let's try that. Compile, close, and there we go. So this is a 2D array, and you can see here, and this makes it nice and easy to read, this is a zero throw, zero column, zero throw, first column, all the way across. And after we're done, then I have row one, row two, row three, for a total of four rows, and then one, two, three, four, five columns. So that's a nice little printout so you can see the actual numbers and the, actually the coordinates of each thing with the uh, colon there, which is supposed to represent some kind of a time. Um, so in review, to create a 2D array, we use two sets of brackets. In front of them, we put what we want to be in the array, give it a name. We can specify the coordinates there, or excuse me, the dimensions. A nested for loop, a for loop inside the for loop is what we typically use to fill up the array. I just use the constructor with a row and column. And then I use the, 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 the uh, nested for loop again to print things out. Uh, so you can modify this, and I'll just, one more little thing here, I'll just maybe go to 9 by, let's say 9 by 2, let's see how, what happens here. Now, 9 by 2 does not break any code. If I, if I change this 9 and 2, the length here, it will be, the printout and the assignments will be based on the lengths. So that should work. Let's try it. Nine rows, two columns. And let's print it and let's see what happens. Nine rows, two columns. There you go. Zero through nine, zero through one for the columns. So that's uh, an example of creating a 2D array of objects.